comes to the Israel of God now. Uh, open up to uh, Exodus the 20th chapter and we're going to read the law we're going to read the law Exodus 20 and verse 1 Exodus 20 and verse 1 when you get there brother let's read and God spake all these words saying I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt out of the house of bondage thou shalt have no other gods before me thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers unto, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor as manservant, nor as maidservant, nor as ox, nor as ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Okay, let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. We're going to pick it up at verse 13. Exodus 20, the Lord spoke to the children of Israel, correct? Mount Sinai, right? He spoke to the, gave, gave them the commandments. Let's see if it was just for Israel. Let's read, brother. 13 and 14, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Read, brother. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Of Israel. The whole duty of man. The whole duty of man, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Okay, let's go to Ecclesi I mean, uh, Revelations 22. <clears throat> 14 and 15 Blessed are they that do his commandments That they may have right to the tree of life And may enter in through the gates into the city For without are dogs and sorcerers And whoremongers and murderers and idolaters And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie Praise the Lord Brothers and sisters, we read the law every Sabbath day here at the Israel of God because the law is what our light that we should be following, brothers and sisters. Amen. Can't get salvation without it. Amen. Right? So I'm Brother Roland. I'm uh, out of Israel of God, Houston chapter. Uh, I mean, class, I'm sorry. And um, is Israel of God, we teach by subject and title. And the title of our lesson today is the Lord's Book of Life. The Lord's Book of Life. And I got a couple of questions for you, Israel. Is your name in it? Mm. Mm. And will your name remain? Mm. And there's, there's things we're going to look at today. The Lord's Book of Life, because we got to figure out, is there a book of life? I had a pastor tell me the Lord don't need that. Mm. The Lord is omnipotent. He don't need a book of life. But I said, it is written, sir. That's right. I'm going to deal with what's written, right? So we're going to see if there's a book of life and why the Lord gave a book of life, right? And then we're going to look at, can your name be blotted out of that book? Mm -hmm. But before we even do that, we want to see if your name, how you get your name in that book. We need to know that too, don't we? Amen. We need to know that first. How do I get my name in that book of life? And then how do I keep my name in that book of life? Amen. Uh, because your name, we're going to find this out today, your name can be blotted out. Which answers another question. 
Once saved, always saved. Mm. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, once you save, you will be always saved. Amen. But you ain't saved now, right? right? That is a true statement, but it's a future statement. Right. It's not a present statement, right? right? Amen. So we're going to look, and then we got something great at the end. The reward. Just like in Pee Wee, everybody get a trophy? <laughs> everybody get a reward. Amen. We all get a reward, whether your name in the book or your name is not in the book. Mm. He got a reward for you. And guess what? All rewards ain't wanted. That's right. All right. So let's get in this lesson, brothers and sisters. We're going to start this off in um, Revelation, the 20th chapter. Because we want to find out, is there a book of life? And we're going to get a couple of different names out of this, too. Because Lord say, oh, Israel, oh, Jeshurun, don't he? Oh, flock of the slaughter. Mm. Oh, speckled bird. Who are you talking about? The same group of people, isn't he? That's right. So you got to understand the uh, writings of this book, brothers and sisters. So Revelation 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. 20 and 11. And when you get there, brother, let's read 11 and 12. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And I saw the dead, small and great. Stand before God. Now, he said, I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. So we know dead people don't stand, do they? No this has to be a resurrection. This is the second resurrection right here, brothers and sisters. And yes, I did say second. Keep coming. We'll teach you. There's more than one resurrection. That's right. Right? And if you're here today, you want to be in the first. Amen. Keep reading, brother. And the books were open. And the what was open? And the books were open. That's plural, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's plural. Books, plural, were open. Go ahead. And another book was open. Uh-huh. Which is the book of life. Yes, sir. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. So it says the books were open. That is talking about the Bible. Biblo binding of books, right? That's right. That is the Bible. And it said another book. That's singular, right? That's was right. open. And it told you what book that was. It's called a what? The book, the of, book life. of life. The book of life. And that's what you want to have your name in, brothers and sisters. How you get your name in that book? It says the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the what? The books. the books. That means it's Bible, right? Your works have to line up with what's written in the book. Not what somebody told you they dreamed. Not even your own nice imagination. Mm. Your works have to line up with what is written in the books, brothers and sisters. So we're going to make sure we understand that. Let's look at this again. Let's go to Daniel, the seventh chapter, to the law and to the testimony, Amen. right? So let's look at this again, Daniel 7, and we're going to pick it up at uh, verse 9. Daniel 7 and verse 9. So we see there is a book of life, right? 7 and 9. And when you get there, brother, let's read. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. Yes, sir. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. So we got 10,000 and 10,000. We talking about the dead that was raised right here, right? Amen. This is second resurrection. And instead of dividing up the book and the books, it just said the what? The books were open, right? But if you read a little bit here and a little bit there, we get an understanding that it was also the book of life and that Bible was open during the same period of time that we read in Revelations, brothers and sisters. Amen. The exact same period of time. Uh, so let's see. If we establish there is a book of life, we need to find out how what? We get our name in that book, right? Because you want to have your name in that book because you want to get the right, a righteous reward, right? You want to have a righteous reward. So let's look at Let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter. Because if you listen to this world, all you have to do is call on the name Jesus. Mm. These, these, that's when people use this Bible, one hit a quitter. Mm. But you got to do the work of evangelists, brothers and sisters. You got to search this thing out. 
the way the Lord tells us to learn. Romans 10, and we're going to look at one verse, 13, how to get your name in this book. Because before anything, you got to get some knowledge, brothers and sisters. Read. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you say his name? You good? So he's a little bit more to that, right? Amen. But people stop right there. That's a period. They think that's it. But it is a verse 14, isn't it? So why they stop at 13 and act like that was it? Right? But we're going to look at this. It says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's see if that's a true statement with an example in the Bible. Let's see what Jesus said, Matthew the seventh chapter. Because we're trying to figure out how I get my name in that book. And if I can just call on his name and get my name in that book, why wouldn't I? Matthew 7, and we're going to look at two verses, 22 and 23. Can I just call on his name and get my name put in that book? Let's read, brother. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? They prophesied in what? In thy name. In his name. Read. And in thy name has thou cast out devils? In, in his name they cast out devils. Read. And in thy name done many wonderful works. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Right? Let's read what the Lord going to respond to them. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You hear that? So can you just call on his name? Because I did a lot of things. In thy name, we prophesied. In thy name, we have cast out devils. In thy name, we have done many what? Wonderful, Wonderful works. But not the simplicity of God. Mm. You want to add some spice to it. Add your own thing to it. The Lord say don't add to or take away. That's right. But because you say the name Jesus, you think it's righteous. But actually, it's only right to you. Mm. Right? So, can you just call on his name? We see right there, that's not it. So, we, that means we got to do what? A little bit more reading after that Romans 10, right? In 13. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to Romans 10. Let's pick it up at verse 14. Because we got to understand this too. Because many tell you, well, the Holy Spirit is going to teach me. I don't need no man to show me nothing. I've heard that too. Thirteen said, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? Let's read 14. Let's put a little bit more emphasis on that. Go ahead. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? You see that? How can you call on him in whom you have not believed? Read. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Yes, sir. And how shall they hear without a preacher? How can you hear without a what? A preacher. Did, I, did it say not say the Holy Spirit? It said, how can you hear without a what? A, a preacher. preacher. The Lord worked through men. He worked, he worked through men to get, to get us over where we are right now. Nebuchadnezzar took us out of the land. So he works through men, brothers and sisters. He works through you. You are his priest, Israel. That's right. You're supposed to be teaching the, all the sons and daughters of Adam the word of the Lord. We finish that? We have 15. Read, brother. And how shall they preach except they be sent? And, unless they went to theory school. Except they be sent. They got a degree on the wall. No, sir, except they and be except sent. Except they've been sent. You ain't got to go to theory school to, to uh, teach this word. You go to theory school, you're teaching a theory. And it's contrary to the righteous word of God, the written word of God. Amen. Read. As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But Hold on. It's beautiful to the Lord. No, sir. Right? It ain't beautiful most of us, aren't Troy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful to the Lord, those who bring good tidings, right? Amen. Because guess what? When you're up here doing this, you got to do some correction. Right, which is good for those who are being corrected. But sometimes we, the correctors don't like to be what? Corrected, right? But this when this comes in, read. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. Uh-huh. For Isaiah said, Lord, 
who have believed our report. See, they have not always obeyed. And that's the problem with us, Israel. We have not always obeyed. Mm -mm. And that's why the world is the way it is. We taught the wicked ones their ways. Right? So we're trying to get our name in this book. And it comes with knowledge first. Right? Read, brother. So then faith cometh by hearing. Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. See, you got faith coming by hearing. And then you got to hear the what? Word of God. Who are you going to hear the word from? A preacher. He just said that. We just read that, didn't he? But guess what? Satan had ministers too. Yes, he does. So now you got to be, now you got to be even more careful. Right? So how do you know, how do you discern whether it's Satan ministers or a minister of the Lord? Let's see. The Lord got everything written. You don't have to, Steve, you don't have to wonder. <laughs> right? Amen. The Lord has it written. It's written in his Bible how you need to do this, brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's go look at this. Uh, Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. It's still talking about how to get your name in this book because it comes with knowledge, brothers and sisters. Twelve and nine. We said he learned. How can I learn without a preacher? Let's talk a little bit about his preaching, so we'll know if it's a minister of Satan, because he has ministers too. Amen. And the Lord has his ministers. That's right. Amen. And they teach contrary. Satan ministers contrary to what's written. Nine, brother. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. The preacher was wise. He still taught the people knowledge. They don't believe that Jesus, y'all don't believe now that Jesus was born outside on the 25th day of December. No, sir. Y'all don't believe now that rabbits have chicken eggs, not bunnies. <laughs> right? No, sir. Y'all don't believe that no more because the Lord has taught you knowledge. I mean, our preacher, our pastor have taught us some knowledge, brothers and sisters. Amen. Not, we don't just believe stuff just because, right? That's right. Read, brother. Yeah. He gave good heed and sought out. And set in order many proverbs. And he did this by you were reading the same way in your book. He wasn't just up here talking to you. You were reading it too. Taking notes. How did he do it? Go ahead. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. Mm -hmm. And that which was written was upright. Even words of truth. What? That which was what? Written. That which was written was upright. So you ain't got to tell me about your dream. It may be right, but it's not upright. Amen. Right is just the opposite of the left, brothers and sisters. Amen. And if you die right, you're gonna do the only thing that means you die right next to somebody else. Mm -hmm. But if you die righteous, we're gonna find out what happens to you then later on. Amen. In this lesson. So you got to have a preacher, and he got to teach you from this word, brothers and sisters. Because he's gonna give you some knowledge so then you can make a great decision. On, do you want your name in this book or not? Right? Amen. So, let's look at this. How do I get my name in that book? Acts 2. What do I need to do to get my name in that book? Acts 2. And we're going to pick it up at 36. I can't stress this enough, brothers. Knowledge comes first. You have to know who you're dealing with. Right? Amen. Thirty-six, brother, because this is at uh, Pentecost uh, after Jesus passed. And here we are. We have Peter teaching them, them Sadducees and Pharisees. And he telling them, he running it down on them. Let's look at what he says here in 36. Go ahead. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. They were like, whoa. It was in the, old, it was in the Bible, in the, in the Old Testament, brothers and sisters. And just like today, they just didn't read. They did not know who he was. But it was written, right? And let's see what happened, though. And that's, and that's it's something that's kind of hard that we got to have, the mind we got to have, brothers and sisters, when we go contrary to the word of God. Read. 
Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart uh -huh. and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? When you go contrary to the word of God, you know you've been doing this thing wrong when you read this book, you're supposed to be like, whoa. You're supposed to repent in your mind. He said they were pricked in their heart, right? And they, and they wanted to find out, men and brethren, what can, what shall we do Amen. that we done done this? We know God is what, merciful? Let's see what he said, what Peter told him to do. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And ye shall, be, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, see, there you go, brothers and sisters. The same thing you got to do to enter a covenant with the Lord is the same thing you have to do to get your name in that book. You have to repent in your mind, brother, not just with your mouth, right? And you got to be baptized in the name, not titles. Amen. Not titles in the name of Jesus, right? And then you got to go and sin no more. You can't live that old lifestyle anymore. When you baptize, what does that represent? The killing of the old man, right? That's right. You got to kill that old man, brothers and sisters, and be raised a new lump. And you got to continue in that. You can't have your name in the book of the living because all of us are living right now, but the Lord is talking about future. Amen. Eternal life, not temporary, right? So let's see why the Lord did this book. Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi, the third chapter. Malachi 3. Why did the Lord... The book, Malachi 3 and... We're going to pick it up at verse 14. Malachi 3 and 14. Because some may think this, but then you're going to see what the Lord did. Some may think this. Read 14. Some may think. Read. Ye have said, it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance? And that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts. You know why? Because man want to see something right away. Man ain't got no patience, no long suffering. Man want to see it with his eyes, which means lack of faith. You don't believe. You just won't. And guess what? Every man won't. This flesh won't. That's right. Read, brother. And now we call the proud happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they that work wickedness are set up. Yeah, they that tempt God are even delivered. They that tempt God are even delivered. But look what the Lord said. Read. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. Spake often one to another because you know what? If you uh, fear the Lord and you spake one to another because you know we're going through some things. And iron sharpeneth iron, doesn't it? Amen. And you're trying to help each other out during these times because you're drinking of that cup. In this world, and if you love, and if you love God, the world hates you. That's right. So you got to have some like-minded brothers and sisters that you can speak to about this thing, right? So he said, "The Lord started again." Sixteen. Then they that fear the Lord spake often one to another. And what happened? And the Lord hearkened uh -huh. and heard it. And then what? And a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord. And that thought upon his name. Y'all see that? And how that preacher going to tell me that the Lord did not, don't need a book? And it's written. The Lord said right here, it said, the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him for them. How is that not true? Read, brother. And, and they really should. Now, this is important now. Look what happened with your name in that book. Look what happened when your name in that book. Read. And they shall be mine, uh -huh. said the Lord of hosts. Uh -huh. In that day when I make up my jewel. No, he said today. In that day. Oh, so it's a future thing. He's going to be his jewel. That's right. So we kill and save now, right? Read. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Mm -hmm. 
read that 17 again, brother. And they shall be mine, mm -hmm. said the Lord of hosts. In that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Ooh, that's a reward for those names written, right? And just think about it. If he's sparing them, he must be sparing them from something. Some destruction. Amen. And that's the reward of those whose name is not written in that book. And we're going to look at that a little bit more later on today, brothers and sisters. 18. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Yes, sir. Uh, we got to be able to discern between the two because you know them by what? You know them by their fruit. You know them by their fruit. Not by their smiles and their compliments of you. They get you blind sometimes. They compliment you and all that. I know that. you by your fruit. Don't, don't be trying to... Favor is deceitful. Amen. Right? And beauty is what? Bang. Yes, sir. Let's keep moving. Let's go to, let's look at an example of this book of remembrance. Somebody's name's written in this book to let you know it's already there. Philippians. Philippians, the fourth chapter. Philippians 4. Lord don't need a book. The Lord has a book. Amen. Four and one. Philippians four and one. When you get there, brother, let's read. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and longed for, my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. So stand fast in the Lord, right? Read. I beseech Judas and beseech Synthethi that they be of the same mind in the Lord. You got to be a different mind. We one body. We should have what? Same mind, right? We shouldn't have all this 12 different things. That ain't, that's not one body. That's somebody thinking individual. That's some groups and stuff. And brothers and sisters, that can be eternally dangerous for you if we're not of the same mind. You cannot have all power and be thinking on your own. And not be obedient. That is what the God family going to look like. Read. Three. And I entreat thee also, tr true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel. Uh-huh. With Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are writ are in the book of life. You see that? That book is already written. It says, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. That means somebody real close to your yoke fellow. That means the same yoke, right? Amen. Help those women which labor with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are what? Written in the book of life. So we see right now the Lord has no respect of person. Sisters and brothers' your names can be in that book. That's right. Sisters, your name can be in that. You just got to be obedient to what the Lord told you to be obedient to. Don't try to, don't try to be like Saul. Be the priest. You be the king. Saul, sister, you be, you be, you be the help, and, and, and you do that. And the Lord will reward you for being obedient for that. Amen. Right? So it's for the Lord, the Lord showed this for everyone. But, you know, what happens if you die? Because we know the book said the dead know of nothing, right? That's right. What happens if you die? Let's look at this. Hebrews 11. Do my name get taken out of that book if I die? Questions you want to ask. You want to find out, because we're talking about this book of life. Hebrews 11 and verse, one verse, verse 4, 11 and 4. Read, brother. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Yes, sir. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. And by being dead, he yet what? Speaketh. speaketh. By being dead, he yet speaketh. Let's look at this a little bit more. Let's go to Revelations 14. Revelations 14. Because we're going to read this again in Genesis. We want to understand what he's talking about here. Revelations 14. And we're going to read two verses. 12 and 13. 
Revelation 14, verses 12 and 13. Read, brother. Here is the patience of the saints. Mm -hmm. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So we're learning something all the way to learning something. If you're a saint, you keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus, right? That's right. Which is the spirit of prophecy. Read, brother. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right. Blessed are the dead. Blessed are the what? The dead. Blessed are the dead, but then it's a little bit on added to that, that what? Which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. See, they may rest from their labors because you can't labor if you're dead, can't That's you? Right. Amen. But the works, the works you did when you were mobile, they follow you. That's right. Right? Mm, well, they be righteous. Them righteous works will follow you, brothers and sisters. But if you just live wanting to be right, that's going to follow you too. That's right. The Lord going to wake you up and give you a reward as well. So remember, righteous reward and reward for being right, wanting to be right. Big difference. Amen. One of them get your name in that book. One of them you got to do your own little bind up and put your name in there. Right? So let's, let's keep moving. Let's go to... Uh, Let's find out, can my name be blotted out? I want, can my name be blotted out? And how do you get your name blotted out? Right? We're going to look at some of these. He Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Let's go back to Hebrews. Hebrews 6. Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Y'all all right, Dallas? Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Look cool up here than it is down in Third Coast. <laughs> Hebrews 6, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. See, can your name be blotted out? That means you made a covenant with the Lord, right? Got your name in the book. Can I get my name out in the book? Mm -hmm. And then it's going to ask you, Noah, well, can I get my name put back in? You know, we came from that Sunday church. We're going to get rededicated. You know what I'm saying? We like all we like playing games with the pastor, but you can't play game with the Lord, brothers no, and sisters, because it is written. That. You can play with your own, you play with yourself, but you ain't gonna play with the Lord. He is written right here. And we're gonna see this. Mm. Let's read that, brother. Six and four. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God. And the powers of the world to come. Now, do you, does that sound like somebody who made a covenant with the Lord? The Lord has opened your eyes and ears. You got your name put in that book. You killed that old man. You rose up out of there and said, I'm going to serve the Lord. Mm. But look what happened. Go ahead. If they shall fall away mm -hmm. to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh. And put him to an open shame. No comeback. Mm -hmm. One time, brothers and sisters, you were in that covenant with the Lord. You got one time to do this thing right. You can't get, keep falling and coming back. I'm going to try. I'm going to try to do it right this time. The Lord don't expect you. He said willful sin. That's what we can't deal with, right? That's right. You're not going to gonna enter the covenant of the Lord. You're going to fall a little bit. The Lord is merciful. But guess what? You got to repent away from that. Can't keep doing the same thing, contrary, brothers and sisters. I ain't going to go back to the table full of vomit and come back to the Lord and say, kiss me. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. No, sir. It's not going to happen. So you got to make up your mind. If you're going to serve him, serve him. Right? But if not, and you come into this truth and you get out, he blocked your name, you can't come back in, brothers and sisters. Mm. Did we just read that? To renew them again, you think Christ is going to come down and die again for you? Yes, he said in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, he did that how many times? Once. 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 So, can't fall away. Let's look at an example of somebody falling away, and let's see what causes that. Let's go back to the beginning, Genesis, the fourth chapter. Let's look at the first murder. To show you how 
even if you enter a covenant with the Lord, you're not safe. The Lord make you a free agent, right? right? Satan still trying to get at you, brothers and sisters. All the time. So. Going to and fro on the earth, seeing whom he may devour. Four and one. Let's read. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have, I have begotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Mm -hmm. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock. And are the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Question. Abel brought an offering to the Lord, correct? That's right. And Cain brought an offering to the Lord, correct? Did Abel tell Cain what he needed to do with his offering? Well, how he needed to do his offering? Yes, Cain chose his offering to the Lord, right? That's right. And Abel did his. So who do you, it says Cain was wroth, right, and his countenance had fallen. I wonder who he's wroth at. Mm. Is he wroth at the Lord? And this is for us, brothers and sisters, because sometimes you walk in this walk, you keeping the law that man said you can't keep, they're going to be wroth at you. Why? Because you make them look bad. Because mm -hmm. you make them look bad. And their decisions, right? Let's read. Six, And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? The Lord saw they asked the same question. Go ahead. If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. So he tells you, if you do well, don't compare, don't look left and right if you do well, brothers and sisters. If you do well, you can keep your name in that book. Don't look left and right. Somebody else, they, they falling off. Man, they, they, they get, they getting, uh, they're doing something different. They, they teaching. They got a position. Hey, it don't matter about that. You serve the Lord. Amen. You start looking left and right, you're going to start falling off. You start thinking carnal-minded, brothers and sisters. The book said, let every man work out who? His oh, own salvation. salvation. Right? That's right. Work out your own salvation. The Lord got a plan for you. The Lord gave some five, he gave some three, and gave some one. The Lord distribute those tokens. You just be obedient to what he give you, right? Go ahead, brother. Eight. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. See, we have to be careful, brothers and sisters, because Satan is crafty. He's a great deceiver. See, he stand at that same door and knock that in Revelation that the Lord is standing in and knocking too. Y'all know that? Satan stand at that same door of your mind. Yes, sir. And see, cause you open up and let the Lord come in and sit with you, don't mean he ain't going to knock at the door too. That's He's right. still going to knock. And when you look at that people, we got flowers, all kind of fun things, new car, hairdo, maybe may have some Afro for me or something. I don't know. Better say that. But he got some that you're going to want, that That's you right. may need. That's right. May, oh, I'm sorry, that you may want. You may want. That this flesh may want. He's going to still knock at that door. What you going to say? Hold on, Lord, I'll be right back. <laughs> no, sir. What I need to answer the door for, I'm with the Lord. Right? Come on. But guess what we do? Get up, go walk to that door, open it up, and have a little conversation at the door. And leave the Lord at the table waiting for us. Mm -hmm. He at that same door. And what happens? He started with a little envy, murder, lying. See how that start increasing? Oh, yeah. A little leaven does what? Leaven, leaven the whole lump. So you got you to catch it at the beginning, brothers and sisters. Because if not, you'll turn back into that old man. Satan ain't done with you just because you into a covenant with the Lord. You still gold tried by the fire. Better say it. 
So you still got to walk this walk. That's right. And run this race, brothers and sisters. Romans, the sixth chapter. Romans 6. This is how we got to walk. We want to keep our name in that book, brothers and sisters. Amen. And you want to get with the right people if you haven't. Come to this state. Keep coming to the Israel of God. We'll give you the information. They'll give you what you need to know to make a decision. You know what? This is the written word of God. I may need to enter a covenant with the Lord. Amen. So I can get my name in that book, and I'm going to keep coming so I can keep my name in that book. Romans 6 and verse 1. Let's read. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Mm -hmm. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we, as, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For we shall walk in newness of life once we come out of that water, brothers and sisters. We can't come back and they're like, yeah, I remember that guy now. You got to be a new creature to all those old faces they, that saw you. You got to continue to be a new creature. Don't backslide. Because he called old Israel backsliding Israel, right? Yes, he did. We can't do that, brother. The Lord has set examples for, for us. Go ahead. Father. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, mm -hmm. that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. We shall not serve sin. You may fall, but we shall not serve sin, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Yes, sir. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no dominion, no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. For in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. So he's telling you an example right here. Go ahead. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Because it's the Satan still going to knock, brothers and sisters, and you got a fancy doorbell ring. Look at the video. See who out there. You ain't got to go Amen. to the door no more. Look at, oh, I'm not dealing with him. <laughs> right? I don't care how pretty you look on the camera. I'm not <laughs> dealing with that. Amen. I'm here with my husband. Amen. The Lord is teaching me right now. What am I going to answer the door for? What more do I need? Go ahead. 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness mm -hmm. unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Your instrument better be careful with that mouth and these hands, right? I ain't got no hair to worry about, but y'all got to be careful with those instruments. These feet run into something, right? We got to be careful with that, brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. Because those things can put you right with them sins right back on you, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Mm -hmm. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not. That to whom ye, owe, ye yield your, your, know ye not that to whom ye yield your servants, yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Yes, sir. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto unright, or to righteousness. See that, that, that old word right there again, brothers and sisters. That's going to keep your name in that book, brothers and sisters. Obedience unto righteousness. You got to have obedience, brothers. You have to know what's written. 
and you got to be obedient to it. Go ahead. 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became, ye became the servants of righteousness. See, talk about what you used to be, right? When you was out in that world, when your name was not in that book, and now you didn't turn to be a servant of righteousness, you enter into a covenant with the Lord, and you got your name in that book. He's telling you, if, you, if your name is in that book, brothers and sisters, certain ways, certain things you shouldn't be doing. Certain way you got to carry yourself. Read. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Mm -hmm. for, as, for as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members' servants to righteousness, unto holiness. That's it. How we used to do and how we should be doing now, right? There's a difference between the two. That's right. Go ahead, brother. For when ye were, were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Mm -hmm. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. The key, you should be ashamed of some of the things you were. I know I am. Amen. And this book cut me every time I put a lesson together. It cut me up looking at that old man, bringing that stuff out. But at the same time, so thankful that the Lord had brought me that way. Amen. That it opened my eyes to see that what I thought was good was really terrible. Right? <coughs> Where we at? <clears throat> we just finished that. We just finished that? Yes. Yes, sir. So we got to know how to walk in this thing. We got to walk in newness of life. We can't let sin reign in our mortal bodies, brothers and sisters. If we got our name in that book, you contrary to the word to the word of God, right? That's right. So let's go to uh, this another thing that get your name out that book in this future. Let's go look at this Revelation fourteen, because satisfying this flesh will hurt you eternally. Yes, it will. Will hurt you eternally. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, let's pick it up at verse 9. This is another thing that will get you your name out of that book. And, I mean, you're going to get an express ticket to the leg of fire. Mm -hmm. Read this, brother. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. The wine of the wrath of God. Go ahead. Which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Without mixture? Ain't no uh, tracer? No, sir. Without mixture. Without mixture. The wrath of his indignation without mixture, brothers and sisters. Vengeance belongs to the Lord. Amen. You don't want to deal with this. The Lord will make your skin, I guess, Deteriorate off your face, Bob. We can read that. Skin just disappeared. Eyes suck in. He's a. Sh Keep reading, brother. Middle of 10. Start at the beginning. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Yes, sir. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. You hear that? And that's going to be how long? Forever. forever. That's going to be forever. And you're going to be seen, too. And you will be seen. Eleven. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Temporary satisfaction will cost you eternally right here, brothers and sisters. Even this talking about the time during the tribulation, they're going to want to eat and buy and sell, and they're going to take that mark sure. without knowledge, right? They're going to be going off feelings and emotions, and, it's gonna, and that's going to be reward of that. And that's going to be reward. So what if you got that, your name in that book, and then you get caught in that tribulation, and you take that mark? Mm. Your name ain't in that book no more. No, sir. You blot it out. 
So that right there will also get it. So you have to endure this thing when? Until the end, brothers and sisters, whether it be when the Lord come or he lay you down in that dirt. That's right. You got to endure this thing until then. You got to run this race until then to keep your name in that book. Because he said, if you die righteous, but the last minute, I can't do it. It's tough. No, don't do that. Continue therein. Amen. Right? Let's go to Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter. Let's look at some reasons why your name can get blotted out. And that's going to be because your sins are still before him, Lord, brothers and sisters. Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. 9 and 12. Read, brother. Mm. Mm. And the Lord said unto me, Arise, get thee down quickly from hence. For thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt, have corrupted themselves. So this is when the Lord was giving uh, Moses the commandments, and Israel down there worshiping a golden calf. The Lord then brought them out of Egypt, split the Red Sea, killed all the Egyptians, and we still want to worship Another God. Lord. Read, brother. They are quickly turned aside out of the way, mm -hmm. which I commanded them. They have made them a molten image. We got to have something to look at. We ain't going to deal with the written word. I got to have something I can just look at. Right? And most nations got something to look at that look like them. Read, brother. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Surely not Israel. It is a stiff-necked people. Go ahead. Let me alone, that I may destroy them. And do what? And blot out their name from under heaven. And I will make of thee a nation mightier and greater than they. Mm. Be disobedient to the Lord. Be disobedient. The Lord said he will blot out their name from under heaven. And that's the whole nation of Israel, brothers and sisters. Sure. Mm. We wouldn't be here today. He said, I will blot their name from under heaven. For disobedience. Stiff neck. The Lord said we got a, a brow of iron and a neck of sinew. Mm. We ain't going to turn. We ain't going to turn from our ways and we ain't going to let nothing, none of this word get through that. Thick school of ours, as y'all used to hear all the time, right? Well, I know I did. All the time. Then I read it like, oh, he was talking about me. <laughs> Exodus 32. Exodus 32. Now, if you know, we're reading it in the Old Testament where the Lord had given Israel the word, the law, right? So as soon as the Lord gave it to him, we started being disobedient. Exodus 32 and 29. The book of life. Is your name in it and will it remain? 29, let's read, brother. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. Yes, sir. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people, Ye have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up unto the Lord. Peradventure, I shall make an atonement for your sin. The Lord's trying to go up and talk to, uh, I mean, Moses going to talk to the Lord, right. trying to make an atonement for Israel. Go ahead. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, All this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Made them gods of gold. They didn't, they didn't got to have something to see, brothers and sisters. We don't have faith. Faith is very, very small, brothers and sisters. Even ten, 100 times smaller than a mustard seed because if we only had that faith, we'd be okay. 
But we got to have something to see. We can't believe what's written. Read. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, mm -hmm. and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Do you realize what he said right there? Moses. Troy. Uh, I ain't ready yet. I got some more work to do. The blot me? Uh, but I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, he said, Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sins, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book which thou hast written. Because you know if that name get blotted out of that book, <laughs> everlasting destruction. That's just showing you the mercy and that, that even Moses had, who was an intercessor, right? That's right. But look what the Lord told Moses. 33, and it's still lined up with what we said. Let every man work out who? His own oh, salvation. That's right. Read that. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever has sinned against me, mm -hmm. him will I blot out of my book. Whoa. See, you're going to end up covered with the Lord, you're going to start back sinning against him? So you keep you sin against the Lord, what's your name in that book? You're turning back to that old man. You can't be in that book, brothers and sisters. You're not going to be worthy of eternal life in the kingdom, right, in the right part of the kingdom. So let's keep moving. Let's look at... Um, Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy 29 chapter. So your sins, you can't continue to sin and think you're going to get your name, keep your name in that book, brothers and sisters. It's not going to happen. Deuteronomy 29 and 14. These are some reads your name, blot going to get blotted out of that book. Deuteronomy 29. And verse 14. Read, brother. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, uh -huh. but with him that standeth here with us this day before the Lord our God. Yes, sir. And also with him that is not here with us this day. That's talking about us. Go ahead. For ye know how we have dwelt in the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. and how we came through the nations which ye passed by. Yes, sir. And ye have seen their abominations, and their idols, wood and stone, silver and gold, which were among them. All the design of things they got out here in this world that we are under, right? We seek that right there. Go ahead. Lest there should be among you a man, or a woman, or a family, or a tribe, whose heart turneth away this day from the Lord our God, to go and to serve the gods of these nations, lest there should be among you a root that beareth gall and wormwood. Go ahead. And it come to pass, when he heareth the words of this curse, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of my heart, to add drunkenness to thirst. Who to talk to somebody had that mentality? Right? And matter of fact, I had that mentality at one time. Couldn't tell me. I'm, I'm good on what I'm doing. But he said, you add drunkenness to thirst. Mm. When you hear the words of this curse, and you bless yourself in your heart. Go ahead. The Lord will not spare him. But what? But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man, mm -hmm. and all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him, and the Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. Brothers and sisters, when this word comes to you, you got to accept it. The, word, the, the books tell us that the written word going to be a witness to you or a witness what? Against, against you. you. You have no excuses. Every man is word is going to be came to them, and they made a choice. Either run to it or run from it. And it's best to run to this word. Like you run to Bitcoin and paycheck and all the other stuff y'all run to for superficial value, right? So we want to run to this word. Amen. Isaiah. Isaiah 43. 
We can look at some things that'll get your name blotted out of that book, brothers and sisters. You continue in your sin. You start turning back to that old man. What if you start leading with your attitude and they got the right attitude? You ain't showing charity when you do things. The Lord, the Lord know the mind. You know, you can fool me. You can fool me. Hey, yeah, smile, yeah. But the Lord know the mind. The thoughts of the mind. Forty-three, and we're gonna pick it up at verse one. Then we're gonna skip. Read. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. The Lord is talking about Israel, but look at Lord mercy for Israel. Let's skip down to twenty-five. Look at Lord what Lord say He's gonna do for Israel. Go ahead. Thou hast not brought me the small cattle of thy burnt offerings. Neither has thou honored me. I'm sorry, 25, 25. 25. Yeah, 25. Skip down 25. I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgression uh -huh. for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins. You see that? The Lord said, I, even I, am he that blotted out thy transgressions for whose sake? His own sake. Why? Who who, who would give his name to? Israel. Israel. Right? For his own sake. Go ahead. Put me in remembrance. Let us plead together. Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Put him in remembrance. We got to remember what the Lord did for us, brothers and sisters. As a people. Just like Stephen reeled out at them brothers in Acts. They got, they got offended by that. But we got to put in remembrance what the Lord has done for us. Go ahead. Thy first father have sinned, mm -hmm. and thy teachers have transgressed against me. Yes, sir. Therefore, I have profaned the princes of the sanctuary, and have given Jacob to the curse, and Israel to reproach. Y'all see that? That's why we're in this position. Because we have been contrary. Our the Lord said our teachers have already has transgressed against him. Because some of us stand up here and teach for to try to glorify ourselves in, on the pulpit for the Lord. And it shouldn't be that way. But if you do those things, brothers and sisters, you will get your name blotted out of that book. Well, you know, I want to find out how do I get my sins blotted out. If I mess up, and I, ain't, I know when you come into this thing, you still got to work. You still got to do some work to do to get, to get all that old man off of you, right? And when you've done this thing, you may have been running this race for 20 years. Mm. And you still got work to do. Right. You still need the Lord to do some of this for you. So let's look at this. Let's go to Psalms, the 51st chapter. Psalms 51. Nothing is more important than living our life for God. Sometimes we get weary. Thank you for joining us here at the Israel of God, Dallas. We look forward to seeing you again.